Ahead on early morning, nearly a third of the country under historic air quality alerts as eerie images emerge showing smoke blanketing cities, prompting residents to stay indoors. We get the pulse of the situation in a live report from New York. And House Republicans dropped their plan to hold the director of the FBI in contempt of Congress. A look at why coming up. And later, the Republican field for 2024 continues to swell as former Vice President Mike Pence officially launches his presidential campaign. And he's not the only one who made the big announcement on Wednesday. Hello and happy Thursday. From News Nation World Headquarters in Chicago, I'm Nick Smith, and this is Early Morning. Air quality concerns are reaching a fevered pitch this morning as smoke from Canadian wildfires blanket the Northeast. This morning, we've learned President Joe Biden has spoken with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the president pledging support to help battle those fires. News Nation correspondent Dre Clark is standing by for us with the very latest this morning. Dre, I understand many New Yorkers are walking around with masks. Yeah, it's kind of like going back to the pandemic days when people were wearing their masks, but that is the recommendation coming from health officials here uh, in New York City. Meanwhile, it is another air quality alert day here in the city. Uh, the mayor, again, asking people to wear their masks as a precaution. Meanwhile, those wildfires continue to burn in Canada, and the, with rain not expected in the forecast, the smoke you see behind me may not start fading until sometime next week. This is an unpredictable series of events. And we cannot provide guidance more than a day in advance at this point. New York City's mayor asking for patience and telling New Yorkers to be careful. City health officials warning tiny particles inside that smoke that's now wrapped around the city can cause eye and throat irritation and major damage to your lungs. Children and the elderly who have asthma, cardiovascular issues or breathing problems should be especially careful until the smoke dissipates and the air quality improves. I can't ever go to work, so we never had nothing like this. Like, it is... It is so scary. Please, if you can, we encourage everybody to stay inside. The best protection is to avoid going outside. This time-lapse video showing how quickly smoke took over the city's iconic skyline. The dramatic color change leaving people both amazed and afraid. In 2021, smoke from wildfires in California produced the same strange orange glow. This is nasty. The wind is pushing massive smoke plumes into the U.S. from Canada, where there are now more than 400 wildfires burning, and more than half of them are still burning out of control. President Biden has has deployed federal firefighters to Canada to help with the firefighting efforts. We have already deployed over 600 U.S. firefighters and personnel, as well as equipment like water bombers to help Canada battle the fires. The fires are happening near the U.S.-Canadian border, allowing smoke to easily roll into the U.S. Air quality alerts have been issued in more than a dozen states, stretching from the Northeast to the Carolinas and parts of the Midwest, affecting more than 100 million Americans. And it could be a few more days before the air is considered clean and clear. Please don't go out if you don't have to. I feel like I say this during snowstorms as well, but this is about your health and your family's health. And that was New York Governor Kathy Hochul, and she says today they will be making one million uh, N95 masks available for anyone who wants them for free uh, as we wait out and, and see how long it's going to take before this smoke uh, goes away and the air quality improves here in New York City and other places around the country. Nick. And Dre, you're there on the ground. Is it also burning the eyes? You know, right now, not necessarily, but, you know, yesterday after I left work, I got home uh, close to one o'clock. Uh, and as I was walking home, my eyes were irritated. My throat started to burn. And it was amazing to see how the color had really changed dramatically. I think we may have seen the worst of the smoke and the haze yesterday. Uh, but if you are one of those people who has a breathing condition or a cardiovascular problem, it really doesn't take much to irritate that, that problem. And so, again, that's the reason why people are being asked to wear a mask. Uh, and the mayor also making that distinction. It's not just those who have a health condition, but they're saying everyone should go ahead and try and wear a mask until the air quality improves. I forgot mine's at home. That's why I don't have one on. Dre Clark, stay safe. And Dre Clark Live for us this morning. Dre, thank you. Also making headlines as you're waking up, House Republicans dropped their plan to hold Christopher Wray, the director of the FBI, in contempt of Congress. Tom Dempsey joins us live from D.C. with a closer look this morning. Tom, good morning. This was their number one salvo last week. What happened?
Hey, good morning, Nick. Yeah, well, this morning we know the House Oversight Committee will no longer be moving forward with the contempt of Congress vote against FBI Director Christopher Wray that was expected to happen in just a few hours on Capitol Hill. For all of our viewers back home who might not be familiar with this story, this all revolves around an FBI document about an unverified tip that alleges some sort of a criminal scheme involving then Vice President Joe Biden accepting money for favorable foreign policy decisions. So, Comer decided to, uh, you know, no longer hold this vote after the FBI came forward saying committee members can see this document. All the committee members will have access to this document now. Earlier this week, during a special meeting on Capitol Hill, both Comer and leading Democrat on the committee, Jamie Raskin, got to see this document known as an FD-1023 form, which describes conversations with a confidential source. Both walked away, though, with very different conclusions. Comer believed the document suggested Biden accepted accepted a bribe when serving as vice president. Raskin called the document, quote, secondhand hearsay and said it stemmed from a claim from Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, that Biden and his son became involved in a criminal scheme in Ukraine. He also pushed the fact that the Department of Justice, under Attorney General Bill Barr, nominated to the position by former President Donald Trump, chose not to proceed with the investigation. With all the oversight committee members now, though, able to see this document, Chairman Comer released this statement saying, quote, allowing all oversight committee members to review this record is an important step towards conducting oversight of the FBI and holding it accountable to the American people. But Raskin shot back saying, quote, as Republicans investigation into President Biden has uncovered no evidence of wrongdoing, they continue to attempt to discredit and dismantle the FBI to help prop up Donald Trump's poll numbers. For today, though, we know the uh, contempt of Congress vote will not be happening against the FBI director uh, tied to this document. We also know that uh, Comer and Raskin will be able to see two additional additional uh, documents uh, brought up in this uh, unverified tip form, Nick. Tom, by your own reporting, all this happened in the last 24 hours. How has top leadership from both sides reacted to uh, the committee's investigation? Yeah, well, as you can imagine, the Biden administration came out, you know, very much denying these claims uh, from House Oversight Committee James Comer about this alleged criminal scheme. They called it a, a fact-free stunt. But, uh, you know, it was interesting, too, to see that House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, a uh, Republican, also came out talking about this, saying that uh, if the FBI allowed committee members to see this document, all of the members to see this document, there would be no need for contempt of Congress uh, proceedings, which is exactly what we saw in response. So... Uh, that vote uh, not happening today, Nick. Tom Dempsey live for us this morning from the nation's capital. Tom, thank you. Developing this morning, for, this morning, former President Donald Trump has been informed he is a target in the investigation into potential mishandling of classified documents. Sources confirming to News Nation it's a sign that the Justice Department may be moving closer to indicting the 45th president of the United States. Mr. Trump has been under investigation since the FBI recovered classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago home in August of last year. In a Truth Social post, the former president denied this, saying in all caps, quote, no one has told me I'm being indicted and I shouldn't be because I've done nothing wrong. Sources say Trump's legal team received the letter on Wednesday from prosecutors confirming the former president is a target. It indicates special counsel Jack Smith is looking directly at Trump's actions as opposed to just those of those around the president. We'll continue to follow this developing story and bring you the latest on air and online at NewsNationNow.com. Now to the race for 2024. Could a candidate with a small town value break through with Republican voters and take the lead over former President Trump? North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is hoping so. He announced his presidential run on Wednesday with plans to focus on issues such as the economy, energy, and national security. Meantime, Former Vice President Mike Pence also kicked off his campaign on Wednesday. The former Vice President is pressing on bringing our country back by securing the border and reviving the economy. For either candidate to win the Republican nomination, it will be a tough row to hoe. Correspondent Kelly Meyer has the latest from Iowa. Two governors, one current and one former, entering the race for the 2024 Republican nomination. That's why today, before God and my family, I'm announcing that I'm running for president of the United States of America. Former Vice President Mike Pence with a little more name recognition than the other. 
But Pence is looking to break away from what many voters know him as, former President Donald Trump's right-hand man. Most Americans know me from my last assignment in the White House. Pence going into detail unlike ever before on what happened behind the scenes of that assignment, revealing what Pence says Trump said to him before Pence certified the results of the 2020 election. Anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. Pence says he's running to make the Republican Party the party of the Constitution again. Pence portraying himself as a Ronald Reagan conservative, tough on national security, fiscally responsible, and above all, loyal to his faith and his family. The American people have always been great. We just need government as good as our people. This as another Republican enters the race, Doug Burgum, the relatively unknown North Dakota governor. Introducing himself to the country in this launch video, sharing his personal story, losing his father as a freshman in high school, working as a shoe shine and chimney sweep, paying his way through school, and building a billion dollar software company. Burgum today sharing why he wants to run. And if you believe that the economy, energy, and national security are critical to our nation's future, remember that's why I'm running for president. That was News Nation's Kelly Meyer reporting. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who has faced intense scrutiny for his relationship with a Republican mega donor, has received an extension to file his annual financial disclosure forms. Justice Thomas has been the subject of ethical and legal concerns after ProPublica reported that Harlan Crow took him on lavish trips, purchased properties belonging to Thomas and his family, and paid two years of private school tuition for a child raised by the justice. Mr. Thomas failed to disclose any of those payments in previous financial disclosures. He and Justice Samuel Alito were each given 90-day extensions. While well, U.S. officials are responding to bombshell claims from a Pentagon whistleblower about an alleged secret government UFO retrieval program revealed during an exclusive interview on News Nation. The explosive allegations from a former high-level U.S. intelligence official claim the government has retrieved and stored non-human aircraft. David Grush also claims the government has possessed UFOs for decades and kept them secret from Congress and the public. The Pentagon is denying the blockbuster claims. Correspondent Joe Khalil has part three of our exclusive interview with Grush. Even more new revelations from former Air Force intelligence officer turned whistleblower David Grush, detailing never before shared secrets over what he claims is a government cover up about flying aircraft that couldn't have been made by human hands. A lot of them were very large, very large, yeah. Like a football field kind of size. And I remember interviewing these personnel. Uh, I'm like, either these people are lying to me, they're having a psychotic break, or. This is some crazy but true stuff that's happening, and I have no good explanation that's prosaic at all for this. I mean, this is like tangible technical craft they're seeing um, up close and personal in some cases when I interview people. Grush broke his silence in a world TV exclusive with News Nation this week. The former Intel officer, privy to top secret information, claims the government has in its possession pieces of aircraft that didn't originate on Earth and has been keeping it from the public. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. <laughs> but Grush says he's seen a lot more that should be public as well. I find it um, very concerning from a transparency perspective that all that the department has declassified were those three famous videos. There are more concerning videos that left me with a lot of questions, yeah. Here on Capitol Hill, lawmakers told News Nation first that soon there will be hearings to look deeper into the UAP reports, unidentified aerial phenomenon, and those hearings will include Grush's story. Congressman Tim Burchett, one of two House members who will lead that probe, says he doesn't believe military intelligence is open about all it knows to the public or to Congress. You have an aircraft that is being chased by military our best pilots, best pilots in the world, bar none, and they're defying our laws of physics. We've got something in our airspace 
that our, that our military does not control. Senator Mike Rounds, who serves on the Armed Services Committee, says some of what Grush revealed is concerning and, if accurate, should be considered a potential threat to national security. It's something that you have to be aware of. You can't take it lightly if there is a suggestion that there's a technology that we're not familiar with. It's one of the top artificial sweeteners in the U.S. in use today, and now there's a new warning about using it. Why researchers say you may want to ditch Splenda. You're watching News Nation, news for all America. Meet the future, a chef a designer, and ooh, an engineer, all learning to save and spend their money with Chase. The chef's cooking up first with her new debit card. Hungry? Uh-huh. The designer's eyeing sequins, uh, no, plaid, while mom is eyeing his spending. Nice. And the engineer? She's taking control with her own account for college. Three futures, all with Chase. Freedom for kids, control for parents, one bank for both. Chase, make more of what's yours. Today, my friend, you did it! You did it! You did it! Centrum Silver is now clinically shown to support cognitive health in older adults. It's one more step towards taking charge of your health. So every day, you can say... Yeah, you Centrum Silver. Hey, what do you guys think came first, the chicken or the baby back rib? Baby back ribs. Yeah. Chicken tenders all the way. Baby back ribs. Chicken tenders. Baby back ribs. Chicken tenders. Baby chicken. back chicken. ribs. Chicken. Baby back. Chicken tenders. I'm gonna go get some pie. <laughs> If you've had thyroid eye disease for years and you can't get any shut eye because you can't shut your eyes, it's not too late for another treatment option. To learn more, visit treatted.com. That's treatted.com. Don't wish. Don't hope. Don't dream. No. Plan. See the steps it takes to get it done right and follow them. At Avis, we rent cars, unlike anyone else rents cars, because for 75 years, we've only had one plan. To make sure you keep yours. For every purpose, for every path, for every soul, For every season, there's a ram. Now during ram season, get 10% below MSRP on the 2023 Ram 1500. Whenever you're hungry, there's a deal on the Subway app. Buy one foot long, get one 50% off in the Subway app today. Now that's a deal worth celebrating. Man, what are you doing? Get it before it's gone on the Subway app. He's a decorated U.S. veteran and a former high-ranking intelligence officer at the Pentagon. And now, for the first time on camera, he's blowing the whistle on something extraordinary. There's a sophisticated disinformation campaign. What our government is hiding from you and the world. As fantastical as that sounds, it's true. What is the truth about UFOs? In a worldwide television exclusive, he talks to News Nation. We are not alone. Sunday at 9, 8 central. Welcome back to Early Morning. I'm Nick Smith. Now, travel website Hotels.com has revealed the strangest room requests that people have made associated with hotels. Some of the unusual requests were for diet water and, get this, melted ice cream. Yeah, Hotels.com room service reported analyzed the room service trends at hotels listed on the website. The site said the most bizarre requests reported by hotel staff members included blowfish, cockle popcorn. Yeah, that's like chili pepper or something like that an omelet without egg whites, a rice bowl for a dog, bison meat, and boiled bottled water. The report also revealed that the Plaza Hotel in New York City offers a $300 home alone Sunday. Well, the country's number one selling artificial sweetener, Splenda, could have some surprisingly negative effects, including damage to your DNA. Yeah, that's sweetener. Right? Splenda is often used as an additive to diet sodas, baked goods, chewing gum, gelatins, and frozen desserts. It can even be found in drug products such as Tylenol, Pepsi AC, and cold and flu medicines. But according to new research published in the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health, Splenda has been found to be 
genotoxic, which means it breaks apart in the DNA and chromosomes and it can lead to cancer. Well, Coca-Cola is releasing a new limited edition flavor marketed to gamers. So take out those controllers and pop that Coke, right? Gamers make up a demographic that is being chased by food and beverage brands. The new flavor is called Coca-Cola Ultimate, and the beverage company has teamed up with Riot Games, the creator of the popular online game League of Legends. Now, Coke Ultimate will be available in the U.S. and Canada beginning June 12th. Now, it's only going to be for a limited time. The product will be rolled out with regular and zero sugar versions. Coke's new venture is designed to draw younger consumers to the brand. From the East Coast to the Midwest, millions are dealing with hazardous smoke from hundreds of Canadian wildfires. This is the front page of the New York Post this morning with headlines, Blame Canada. The haze coming from raging wildfires hundreds of miles away, as Dre Clark just reported. Over 400 fires in Canada, with 200 of those being classified as out of control. Officials urge people to stay indoors and avoid breathing the polluted air. The FAA paused flights from the upper Midwest bound for LaGuardia Airport. Now, flights to Newark Airport in New Jersey, those were also slowed. Well, last night, Chris Cuomo interviewed a doctor about the health concerns people are facing from wildfires. Here's part of their conversation. But how toxic and what does that mean about how you got to live your life? Right, no, so it's a great question, and, and my heart goes out to anyone exposed to noxious and toxic, toxic stimuli, be it our East Palestine and neighbors, to those living in these uh, metropolitan cities who are exposed to the smoke from the wildfires. Toxic in of itself, the term just still implies a spectrum, things from unpleasant to very harmful. So everyone should consider taking the proper precautions depending on who they are. If you know you have underlying lung and heart conditions, these chemicals may be toxic from more of a, uh, a harmful standpoint. Mm -hmm. They may cause your underlying conditions, heart conditions, lung conditions to really flare, to really exacerbate. For many patients who live with asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or heart failure, they realize the management of the disease, the disease is like a deck of cards, right? That's stacked into a nice house that can be undone with any trigger right. such as the smoke. And for others, it's more of a just a unpleasant feeling that you'll get, blurry eyes, uh, dry throats and coughing. But at the same time, they're still not what your lungs want to breathe in. So your lungs are trying to warn you, get out, you know, stop right. breathing this in. So yeah, these are toxins and there's a spectrum depending on the health status of an individual breathing them in. In a city uh, like New York, a lot of people are in apartments. They should be talking to their resident managers or whoever's running the building about what kind of filters they have uh, in the system. That makes a difference. Certain filters will pick up this kind of particulate matter. Others won't. I'm being told that surgical masks are not going to help you uh, with this kind of stuff. And if you don't have a, math, a mask with a real filter system, it, it may feel like it's helping you, but that it really isn't. Make sure you watch Chris Cuomo on his primetime show, Cuomo, weeknights at 8, 7 Central, right here on News Nation. Well, former Vice President Mike Pence has joined a crowded cast of candidates on the Republican side. But what's next? Coming up, we'll look at where the race stands after a busy week on the trail. You're watching Early Morning on News Nation. How many guys think came first, the chicken or the baby back rib? Baby back ribs. Yeah. Chicken tenders all the way. Baby back ribs. Chicken tenders. Baby back ribs. Chicken tenders. Baby chicken back chicken ribs. Chicken. ribs. Baby back. Chicken tenders. I'm gonna go get some pie. <laughs> it's easy to get lost in investment research. Introducing J.P. Morgan Personal Advisors. Hey, David. Connect with an advisor to create your personalized plan. Let's find the right investments for your goals. Okay, great. J.P. Morgan Wealth Management. Open a Pepsi to unlock up to three free months of Apple Music and listen to Bad Bunny all summer long. If you've had thyroid eye disease for years and itchy eyes have you itching for a fight, it's not too late for another treatment option. To learn more, visit TreatTed.com. That's TreatTed.com. Shopping for Father's Day is hard. Actually, it's easy. You never know what to get him. Just give me steak. It has to be perfect. Yep, dads want steak. Right now, Omaha Steaks is offering dad's favorite gift package that includes four of our exquisite bacon-wrapped filet mignons, four air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, boneless pork chops, jumbo Frank's dessert, and more. All for just $99.99. Save 61%. Order today at omahasteaks.com TV, and you'll get eight burgers free. Now that's what I'm talking about. 
I have over my 30 years seen many patients who have excessive sweating. I recommend Carpe. It's a game changer. Carpe is up to three times stronger than a regular strength antiperspirant. Try it today at mycarpe.com with limited time free shipping. Money stresses me out. So I got this Experian app and now I'm checking my FICO score. I got a new credit card and I'm even finding ways to save. Finally, getting smart about money feels really good. See all you can do with the free Experian app. Download it now. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Reset Addiction Treatment Helpline. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We'll find you the right treatment regardless of your financial situation. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So take five minutes of your time and call us right now. We're here answering the phone. I promise it'll change your life. Call 800-431-6882. That's 800-431-6882. Again, 800-431-6882. Welcome back to Early Morning. Former Vice President Mike Pence is officially in the race for the Republican nomination for president. He joins a crowded field of those trying to fend off former President Donald Trump. Joining me now to help put all the drama of this high stakes race in perspective is Michael Schnell, congressional reporter at The Hill. Michael, good morning. Hey, good morning, Nick. Uh, Michael, you and I talked about this earlier this week. Now, the former vice president is officially in the race, and he appeared on CNN last night for a town hall, and it didn't take long for his former boss to come up. Take a listen to part of what he said, and let's talk on the other side. The president and I had a difference in the past, and that hasn't changed. But also, there are profound differences about the future of this country and the future of the Republican Party that are articulated today. But when the president asserted that I had the right to overturn the election, I said today that I, I felt that he was he was asking me to choose between him and the Constitution. Michael, in that town hall meeting, did Mr. Pence say enough? How is Mr. Pence managing his message with Republicans who may still favor the former president? Nick, there were two clear themes that I saw in Mike Pence's town hall last night with CNN. First, he wanted to draw a, a very direct line between him and former President Trump. January 6th came up a number of times. Mike Pence noted on a number of occasions that he thought that was a terrible day. He said that he, again, believed that he did not have the authority to overturn the election results on January 6th, as former President Trump had suggested and had urged him to do, as we've seen through subsequent reporting and hearings. But he also walked that fine line a little bit, not trying to totally alienate some of the Trump supporters. For example, he said he hopes the DOJ thinks better than to charge former President Trump in this uh, classified documents case. There's been some reporting in recent days that the DOJ is nearing an indictment. Uh, but other than Trump, uh, Mike Pence also really highlighted his conservative values and his conservative bona fides. Remember, uh, this is somebody who was a congressman from Indiana, a governor from Indiana. He is a devout evangelical, and he has a lot of these very strong uh, conservative values, whether that be on foreign policy, whether that be on trade, specifically abortion, which came up a lot in last night's town hall. So what we saw from Mike Pence was, hey, I'm a Republican, but I'm not like Trump. You know, I disagree with a number of what, things that Trump said, but he didn't want to totally alienate that wing of the party. Michael, you talked about how Mr. Pence walked that fine line. Now, he did say that January 6th is disqualifying for Mr. Trump to run again. How is that sitting with members of his own party? Yeah, so this was sort of an interesting uh, statement that Mike Pence had made. He said that it was disqualifying. He essentially said that former President Trump had a choice between the Constitution and between himself, and he chose himself. And now the American voters can make that same decision, the Constitution or former President uh, Trump. And then Mike Pence was asked, well, you know, would you, you said that you would support the eventual nominee. How could you say that you'll support former President Trump if you said that 
he's basically disqualified from holding office. And Pence said that he he demurred. He said that he doesn't believe that uh, he will be the nominee. But look, there are a number of strong supporters of former President Trump up on Capitol Hill. A number of lawmakers have endorsed him more than any other candidate in the race, I will note. And I don't know if his stance on January 6th will really sway any voters at this point. Look, we're coming, January 6th was back in 2021. Uh, the perspectives and, and, and stances on that very polarizing day are very strong and very set in. So everyone knew where former President Trump, uh, where uh, former Vice President Mike Pence stood on the issue of January 6th. So I don't really know if that'll be a, 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 an issue uh, that'll sway any voters just because people knew where he stood on that. There's nothing more to learn there. Michael, let's talk about a couple more people who announced yesterday, including North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, who released a really nice, well-produced video. I enjoyed his message of talking about how he really worked his way up from the ground up. He threw his hat into the ring, but many may not have heard of him before now. Uh, how does this work to get his name ID out there? Listen, uh, Iowa, which is obviously the first uh, uh, the first primary state for Republicans. It's a state that is really based off retail politics. So I would not be surprised if we saw Doug Burgum uh, get settled in Iowa, start meeting voters, shaking hands with voters, having conversations with them, and not just in Iowa, but also in other early states, whether that be New Hampshire, South Carolina. Look, the story of Doug Burgum, this lower level uh, government official who's jumping into the presidential race, reminds me of Pete Buttigieg. Remember mm -hmm. when the little known uh, mayor of South Bend, Indiana, jumped into the Democratic primary for president. Uh, he was relatively unknown on the national stage. He ended up winning the Iowa caucuses. So I think that just shows that if these candidates put the work in, uh, get get really into that retail politics and try to sell their message to voters, sometime a candidate who does not have strong name I, uh, ID on the national stage could grow and could actually come out uh, the faring very well in some of these and early And that's states. one of the things I took away from his announcement yesterday, Michael, that he seems very comfortable talking to people on the ground because he's like, listen, I've shined shoes. I've been a chimney sweep. I know how to talk to people. There will be a number of big issues affecting the 2024 vote, but one of the top will likely be that Social Security uh, situation for seniors. How are Republicans positioning themselves against President Biden on this topic? Yeah, well, look, People like Ron DeSantis and former President Trump, they have said that Social Security and Medicare should not be touched. And then when you look at somebody like former Vice President Mike Pence, he in the past has supported entitlement reform. So uh, this will likely emerge as an issue where you'll see a different candidate try to draw a contrast with one another and sell their policy position to the voters, specifically because, you know, a lot of the time with these Republican and conservative candidates, the, their differences on issues are, are very small, right? They're very incremental. But on something like entitlement reform, we actually see some large differences between these candidates. So we can see uh, these candidates use it as a way to sell themselves to voters. Uh, Michael, one last question before I let you go. The debt limit a law just signed by President Biden last week ups the ante for the presidential election. Many important deadlines have been pushed back to 2025. How big of a risk for this is for this for the White House? Well, look, we just saw for months and then it specifically amped up in the recent few weeks uh, that this debt limit showdown up on Capitol Hill, really here in Washington, because it was on both sides of Pennsylvania Avenue between the White House and between the Capitol. Uh, was time consuming, was high stakes, and it had a lot of implications. We saw the stock market be rattled and, 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 and economic analysts and experts sort of warn of what a default could be. Now, Democrats saw a big win in those debt limit negotiations by getting uh, any deadline to, again, raise the debt limit uh, kicked to beyond 2025, kicked to beyond 2024. The debt limit will be suspended until January 1st, 2025. So let's think about it. At that point, there will be a, there'll be you know, the, the, the 2024 election will be over. So either Joe Biden will have another four years in office or we'll have a new president coming into office. And we're also going to see a new makeup of the House and Senate because obviously there are a number of down ballot races in 2024. So the election is really important and high stakes because we're going to be, you know, voters are going to be electing officials who are then going to be going through these same negotiations again over the debt limit, which was a very heavy lift now. It will likely be a heavy lift in 2025. So it'll be interesting to see who voters elect who will ultimately have this on their plate. Michael Schnell, once again, I thank you for joining me this morning. Michael Schnell, congressional reporter at The Hill. Michael, have a good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Issues surrounding the border and immigration will likely be big factors in the race for the White House next year. And it may be why candidates on both sides are visiting and speaking out about the issue.
News Nation correspondent Allie Bradley has a closer look. From one end of the state to the other, presidential hopefuls are here in Arizona right now trying to assess the border crisis firsthand. So Florida Governor Ron DeSantis arrived in Cochise County, which is in the Tucson sector, which is basically the epicenter of human and drug smuggling, leading the nation in gotaways, which are people trying to evade law enforcement and also in fentanyl seizures. Now, when the governor arrived here, of course, he was with several different sheriffs from different states across the country. And it does include his own state of Florida, Texas, Arizona, Idaho, and New Mexico. This all, of course, comes as the governor has been receiving some backlash for once again sending migrant flights across the country, this time to Sacramento. The governor, however, maintains that these flights were voluntary and that they did get verbal and written consent from these migrants who chose to board this plane. Now, the other thing that the Florida governor is doing is he has deployed several resources to Texas after Governor Abbott asked for uh, for a little bit of help. So the governor saying that uh, people within the Florida system, the law enforcement that went down there on behalf of Florida actually encountered and interacted with nearly 6,000 migrants. One of them was actually an MS-13 gang member who flagged on the U.S. terror watch list. Now, of course, Governor DeSantis' his trip down here, he was not only meeting with sheriffs, but also with community members as well, trying to really assess what's going on down here. And that includes some ranchers who are being impacted by human and drug smuggling in the county. Now, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis had this to say when he was asked about what's going on down here at the border and what he has witnessed. We've seen almost two and a half years uh, of disaster upon disaster. Um, and I don't know how you could just sit there and let the country uh, be overrun with millions and millions of people coming illegally and massive amounts of drugs coming in uh, that are having a profound impact on communities all across this country. And yes, we're here uh, at ground zero, uh, but part of the reason we're here is because this is not a problem that only affects border counties. If it was only that, we still should want to be here supporting because what's going on is wrong. Uh, but this is affecting communities all throughout the United States of America. Now, Ron DeSantis is not the only presidential candidate down here along the border this week. On the Democrat side, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is actually down here as well. And we actually had the opportunity to go along with RFK Jr. and his camp exclusively when they toured the food bank down there in Yuma and also sat one on one with recently retired Yuma Border Patrol Sector Chief uh, Chris Clem. And so we actually got to talk with uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. a little bit exclusively about his stance on the border and it really couldn't be more different than the current administration when it comes to border security. I think we need detention and the reason for that is I and I understand the impulse of the administration is that detention uh, is inhumane and but what we're doing now is much more inhumane because you're in because of the suspension of the of the de detention policy it has become an invitation to other people to take this huge risk to try to get into this country because it's an open door. It's a signal that it's an open door. Now, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. also said that one of the priorities was really strengthening the working relationships with Mexico and really holding Mexico accountable when it comes to illegal immigration. Now, when I talked with Governor Ron DeSantis about his trip here, he says that he learned a lot. He has a lot to process and take back with him to Florida. Uh, both camps kind of are, are in, in the process of working out their next trips to the border or their next conversations with border law enforcement as well to continue these conversations. Back to you. That was News Station correspondent Allie Bradley reporting. An argument turned deadly between neighbors in Florida now. Allegations of racial slurs are adding fuel to the fire. Coming up, the very latest in a case that has gone viral. You're watching Early Morning. What do we always say, son? Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance. They only pay for what you need. That's my boy. Stay off the freeways. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Open a Pepsi to unlock up to three free months of Apple Music and listen to Bad Bunny all summer long. 
Hello there. Would you like some lemonade? Five dollars, please. Had enough inflation? Undo inflation with Dish. Get the same TV bill every month for three years. Supply chain issues. The three-year TV price guarantee, only from Dish. The Subway Series is taking your favorite to the next level. Like the number 20, the Elite Chicken and Bacon Ranch, built with rotisserie-style chicken and double cheese. I love what I'm seeing here. That's some well-coached chicken. You done, Peyton? The Subway Series just keeps getting better. My mental health was much better, but I struggled with uncontrollable movements called TD, tardive dyskinesia. TD can be caused by some mental health meds. And it's unlikely to improve without treatment. I felt like my movements were in the spotlight. Ingreza is a prescription medicine to treat adults with TD movements. Ingreza is different. It's the simple, once-daily treatment proven to reduce TD that's number one prescribed. People taking Ingreza can stay on their current dose of most mental health meds. Ingreza 80 milligram is proven to reduce TD movements in 7 out of 10 people. Don't take Ingreza if you're allergic to any of its ingredients. Ingreza may cause serious side effects, including sleepiness. Don't drive, operate heavy machinery, or do other dangerous activities until you know how Ingreza affects you. Other serious side effects include potential heart rhythm problems and abnormal movements. It's nice. People focus more on me. Ask your doctor about number one prescribed once daily in Greza. Learn how you can pay as little as zero dollars at ingreza.com. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get MD Hearing's revolutionary Neo hearing aids for just $299 a pair. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The Neo is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology, many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Neo hearing aids for just $299. Plus, we'll add in a portable charging dock and ship your order absolutely free. The Neo is nearly invisible with its tiny in the ear canal design. And you can get two Neo hearing aids with a 45 day risk free trial, free shipping, and free lifetime U.S.-based support for only $299. So call now. 800-790-3251. Again, that's 800-790-3251. Who do you guys think came first, the chicken or the baby back rib? Baby back ribs. Yeah. Chicken tenders all the way. Baby back ribs. Chicken tenders. Baby back ribs. Chicken tenders. Baby chicken back chicken ribs. Chicken chicken baby back ribs. Baby back Chicken tenders. On second thought, it really depends which side of the buffet you start on. <laughs> Tech. Works hard at hour one and twice as hard when you take it again the next day. So Betty can be the barcode beat conductor. Go, Betty! Let's be more than our allergies. Seize the day with Zyrtec. Welcome back to Early Morning. I'm Nick Smith. The trial for a Florida deputy accused of failing to stop a school shooter is underway. The prosecutor says former sheriff's deputy Scott Peterson ridiculed as the coward of Broward could have prevented six of 17 deaths at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018. But instead of going inside the building to stop the gunman, he says Peterson took cover outside. However, Peterson's attorney argued his client is being made a scapegoat for the shooter, Nicholas Cruz. Child neglect is among the charges the Broward County deputy is facing. Peterson could receive nearly 50 years of prison time if convicted. A Florida woman is behind bars and facing multiple charges after admitting she shot and killed her neighbor during an argument last week. Now more details are emerging about how the deadly confrontation unfolded, including allegations of racial slurs being directed at the children of the victim. News Nation correspondent Brooke Schaefer joins us with the latest. This deadly shooting happened last week Friday, but the woman authorities say pulled the trigger is only now behind bars. Authorities near Ocala, Florida said a state law delayed their ability to immediately arrest the suspect in this case. We have video from the Marion County Sheriff's Office of the woman authorities say is now facing a manslaughter charge. She was arrested on Tuesday. 58-year-old Susan Lawrence is accused of shooting and killing her neighbor, A.J. Owens. The sheriff said Owens, a mom of four, had gone to Lawrence's apartment after she reportedly yelled at and threw skates at Owens' children. Police say Lawrence shot that mom through a door. She claims she acted in self-defense. 
Because of that, and because of Florida's stand your ground law, investigators couldn't immediately charge Lawrence with a crime, sparking some small protests in Marion County, people calling for her arrest. The sheriff said because of the stand your ground law, he couldn't make an arrest immediately, saying his team first needed to prove it wasn't self defense. Now, some of you have asked me about the stand your ground law. Personally, I think it's a great law designed to help Floridians to defend themselves and keep themselves safe. However, it does not apply in all situations, and this situation is a prime example of when it was not justified. It was simply a killing. Florida is one of about 30 states that has a stand your ground law. It allows people to claim self-defense, but as we saw in this case, authorities said it can also sometimes become a bit of an obstacle because investigators are forced to bring evidence proving it wasn't self-defense before they can bring any charges. Back to you. Well, happening now, this is a live picture of that volcano. That's the Kilauea volcano. It's erupting again in Hawaii's Big Island. Now, this is a live picture from the Geolog Geological Survey satellite. Uh, those pictures are absolutely stunning. They say that observers will be able to see that up close as close as like a half a mile away. The Hawaiian Volcano Observatory detected a glow in Kilauea's summit early Wednesday morning, which indicated the eruption had started. Now, the observatory says the eruption is happening within the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and there is no indication of a threat to populated areas. Now, the park is expecting thousands to view that eruption. Uh, you can get, like I said, as close as half a mile away. Meanwhile, Kilauea's alert level has been raised to red for warning. We'll definitely keep an eye on that one. It's been called bigger than Beckham. Lionel Messi is a soccer phenom and is just now entering his new professional phase. News Nation correspondent Xavier Walton is live from Messi's future home, uh, Drive Pink Stadium in Fort Lauderdale with more on the game-changing contract for America's newest sports phenom. Xavier, why would Messi's turn down uh, re reportedly more than a billion dollars to come to Miami instead? Nick, I can give you millions of reasons, but it only comes down to one thing. And for Messi, that is family, his family. And at the end of the day, uh, this deal is not only one of the biggest in soccer history, but really American sports history. After winning a World Cup last year with Argentina, two French league titles with PSG, 10 Spanish league titles, plus another four European club championships with FC Barcelona, there's really not much Lionel Messi hasn't done. But while he may be entering the twilight of his playing days at age 35, the man many consider to be the greatest soccer player of all time seems to only just now be hitting his prime earning potential. The Argentine superstar turned down a contract with Saudi Arabia's Al Halal, reportedly worth more than one and a quarter billion dollars to sign with MLS and David Beckham's Inter Miami. The top paid player in MLS is making $8.2 million this season, and Messi is bound to earn at least as much, though the specifics of his contract aren't yet known. The deal also reportedly includes first of their kind profit sharing arrangements with Apple TV Plus, the league's streaming partner, and Adidas, the league's outfitter. It's also been reported that Messi will get a piece of an MLS franchise when he retires, similar to the deal his new boss, David Beckham, signed when joining the LA Galaxy back in 2007. But it's not just about the money. In an interview with two Spanish outlets Wednesday, Messi making it clear that the move to the U.S. is about getting out of the limelight and taking some of the pressure off. I wanted to leave Europe, get out of the spotlight, and think more about my family, he said. It was time to go to the U.S. League to experience football in a different way and enjoy the day-to-day. -day. And Nick, fans are going to have to bottle up their excitement before they see him play here, suiting up uh, in his MLS uniform. Um, he's reportedly not going to be playing here until August, um, but I think they can wait. I, I think fans can wait that long until August this summer uh, to get prepared to see Messi playing right here by me. Xavier, real talk. We were having this conversation yesterday in the post-production meeting. Do you think most people will recognize him if he were to walk down the street? Absolutely not. I mean, that's the other thing. It's not like he's huge in stature. 
the average fan is going to have no idea the, the soccer greatness that would be walking right by. Uh, but he could be stroming the streets near you. Xavier Walton, thank you so much this morning. The Transformer series has entered a new realm of Autobots, and you won't want to miss that storyline. All that and more when Early Morning returns. He's a decorated U.S. veteran and a former high-ranking intelligence officer at the Pentagon. And now, for the first time on camera, he's blowing the whistle on something extraordinary. There's a sophisticated disinformation campaign. What our government is hiding from you and the world. As fantastical as that sounds, it's true. What is the truth about UFOs? In a worldwide television exclusive, he talks to News Nation. We are not alone. Sunday at 9, 8 central. Suffering from sinus congestion, especially at night? Try Vicks Sinex for instant relief that lasts up to 12 hours. Vicks Sinex targets congestion at the source, relieving nasal congestion and sinus pressure by reducing swelling in the sinuses. Try Vicks Sinex. My name is Wendy, I'm 51 years old, and I'm a hospital administrator. When I talk to patients, you can just see from here up when you're wearing a mask, and I have noticed those lines beginning to really become not so much moderate, but more severe. I'm still Wendy, and I got Botox Cosmetic. And I'm really happy with the results because they're very subtle, and I feel like I look like myself, but just less lines. Botox Cosmetic is FDA approved to temporarily make frown lines, crow's feet, and forehead lines look better. The effects of Botox Cosmetic may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness may be a sign of a life-threatening condition. Do not receive Botox Cosmetic if you have a skin infection. Side effects may include allergic reactions, injection site pain, headache, eyebrow, eyelid drooping, and eyelid swelling. Tell your doctor about your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications including botulinum toxins, as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. See for yourself at BotoxCosmetic.com. Meet the team, all using Chase to keep up with their finances. Smart bankers, convenient tools, boom. One bank with the power of both. Chase, make more of what's yours. I want to enjoy my free time and not worry about expensive home repairs. So my friend recommended 210 Home Buyers Warranty. We researched 210 online and they had great reviews. It was easy to get started. They cover the entire house, cooling, heating, plumbing, and appliances. And it doesn't matter how old they are either. With 210, we are free from the hassle of huge repair bills. Protect more, pay less with 210 Home Buyers Warranty. Call 855-210-4290 or visit 2-10.com today. And deep breath in. Did you know that people everywhere are recommending GoodRx? My doctor told me about GoodRx to help us save money on our meds. And my daughter told me about it. I take a lot of prescriptions. GoodRx helps me keep up. My neighbor showed me the app. It helped me save on my kids' allergy pills. Americans everywhere are sharing the savings. Uh, dropping off a prescription? Great. Another good reason to check GoodRx. Some men and women freak out when they first notice signs of hair loss. Some say, no big deal, I don't look much different. Either way, hair loss does sneak up on you. And if you do nothing, chances are you'll soon see your hair getting thinner and thinner and thinner. All while a range of great options are available to you right now. Before you lose any more hair, grab your phone and scan this QR code. Because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts, can stop your hair loss and give you your real hair back permanently. We're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card to everyone who scans the code now. But remember, the sooner you get started, the sooner your results of great looking hair. For a free information kit and gift card for $250 off, scan the code. Don't wait, scan the code now. Get the permanent solution to hair loss. Protected by the Bosley Guarantee. From the first time he stepped foot on the stage of the Apollo Theater at 13 years old, before anyone recognized his name, he knew he had the dream to have a star here on the Walk of Fame. Hip-hop legend Tupac Shakur posthumously received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame just days before his birthday. His sister accepted the star on behalf of their family. Tupac's professional music career only lasted five years, but he sold more than 75 million records worldwide. 
including the Diamond Certified album, All Eyes on Me. And he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017. Tupac was given the 2758th star on the Walk of Fame. Well, Transformer 7 Rise of the Beast will not only showcase Hollywood's biggest names, it will introduce a whole new realm for the Autobots in their battle for Earth. Doug Koch with our LA affiliate has more. Well, this time we're introduced to a new set of characters, characters who could transform into animals or other creatures. They were first introduced back in the cartoon series in 1996 and now again in 2023. You want it? Come and get it. Come and get it. You brought a human here? I'm nobody. I ain't even seen nothing. I'm not even seeing anything right now. Describe the experience working opposite a Transformer. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's, it's definitely an interesting experience because there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. um, and, it's, and it's exciting to see, you know, what happens after you've already shot the movie. How big can this guy be? Uh, he eats planets. So, like, way bigger than a planet. My mom came to visit while we were filming in Montreal. And uh, she watched and she was like, she couldn't believe how it was made. And then she saw it the other day and she was like, she can't believe that what we did ended up being that because she knew that we were talking to air. Maybe there's a way to save our home. Back up. Oh, I thought we were boys. And cut. Okay, moving on, moving on. Are you amazed that you were able to bring this thing to life? Uh, a bit, yeah. I'm still like on cloud nine a bit. I'm um, still in denial, I feel like, a little bit. We just finished a mill film a couple of weeks ago, so for us to be in a situation now we're showing the world, it's pretty crazy. You've never faced anything like this. It takes a village to make these kinds of movies and to make these kinds of characters, and it's really expensive, um, apparently, as well. Transformers Rise of the Beasts heads to theaters Friday. Thanks so much for joining me on Early Morning, but stick around, don't go anywhere, because Morning in America with Adrian Bankert starts in three minutes.